All right, he's Omega here, and I got some work I'm doing on the my Yamaha Warrior Day Wally here, and um, so um, so yeah, it just rained really hard today, so it's really wet out. It's still a little bit wet outside, but uh, yeah, it, it rained and then like the sun came out right away. So we had like a squall, is what, what you'd call it. it. Rained like super hard, but anyway, I'm trying to get some work done on this Warrior so we can take it to King of the Hammer some cool off-roading action uh, and we can do some off-roading action um, so uh, so one of the problems I'm having with the warrior is it's got like it's kind of got like a hiccup or it kind of wants to stall out it uh it's it mainly stalls out when it's uh, when it's cold when it's cold it don't want to stay running so when it warms up it kind of goes away but you can still kind of hear it it's kind of like a hiccup like it'll it'll run it'll run well and then It'll run good, and then it'll suddenly just hiccup. It'll just kind of want to stall all of a sudden, and maybe it'll start keep running, depending on like what the idle is. But uh, so I think I found out the problem. Um, this is one of the common problems with the Warrior. This is the intake manifold on the Warrior. It's the one that goes from the head here to the um, the carb, and actually the carb is in the bag, so it so won't get wet. But uh. But yeah, so there it is. Um, so what they're saying is these crack. And sure enough, when I took it out, right, right here. See that? There's a crack right here. It's kind of a little bit hard to spot. You would think like it's mostly made out of aluminum if you look at this thing, right? And you can't even spot the crack from inside. But if I push out, push from the outside to inside, there you go. There's our problem. See that? I mean, let me take a picture with the flash on so you guys can get a better look at that, but it's definitely not good. <laughs> Okay, I tried to get as good a shot as I could. So, anyway, it's it's a common problem with the Warrior. Other places you can get the leak from is uh, on the O-ring on the carb. Um, you don't want any air leaks from there, um, and from this O-ring here. So, anyway, this uh, this is pretty much done here. Um, I suppose you could probably put some RTV over it if you wanted to fix it, or get some of that kind of rescue tape, that silicone um, tape, but. Uh, here, the good thing about the Warrior is that they sell a lot of parts for it. You know, they're pretty easy to get. So, there it is. It's a cylinder piston gasket. I don't think that's a gasket, but, but yeah. So there it is. That's a it's a replacement intake manifold. So okay, this one uh, turns out okay. This rubber is like really hard on it. This one is much more springy. Um, I bought this on eBay for like about ten dollars. I'll uh, I put a subtitle below who I got it from, but uh, there's a couple there's a couple brands you can get. I don't think it's a let's take it out of the package. So there they are side by side. This one is definitely a lot cleaner. There's the O-rings. This one has an O-ring here already. It should be good still. Yep, brand new O-ring is good. This one is still pretty good too. Really, the only th only problem with this one is that yeah, the um, it has that crack in it. And what uh, one of the causes of that could be uh, your motor mounts. If your motor mounts aren't tight, so let's see, this one of them right there. So you can make sure those motor mounts are really tight when you. Um, there's another one, I believe, right here somewhere. No. It's the, it's a reverse linkage. Oh, right there. There's one right there. So just go ahead and check those out. Um, that's that's uh, one of the problems. Uh, that's one of the problems that can cause those intake boots to fail. Is from what I hear. Um, but uh, yeah. So I mean, because when the engine rocks back and forth, it kind of it kind of pulls the carb in and out. Uh, yeah, it kind of pulls this in, on this intake manifold, and that's what would cause it to leak. It's you know it's probably. Just, one of the flaws in the designs on this quad. So I'm just gonna go replace this, and hopefully it'll uh, it'll idle well, idle and run well. Um, so 
Another thing you want to note is you can you can supposedly install this backwards, um, and so you have to make sure you keep an eye on this arrow thing. So you gotta make sure this arrow's up when you put it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to install it. Um, re um, removing it is about the same. It's a little more difficult to remove it um, because the uh, the bolts are pretty tight on mine. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put some anti-seize on them too, since I've, I've never taken this out. But uh, supposedly this is a common problem with the Warrior. Get these intake manifold cracks, and then if you know what the symptoms are, then you know I've actually had the same problem with my uh, with the old DR650 I used to have. It was uh, it would it wouldn't stay running. It would just stall all the time, and it would just kind of like hiccup, and like it would be it would just be unrideable. You can you couldn't ride it. This one I could kind of ride. Um, when it's hot, but uh, I'm assuming the crack isn't that bad. It, it could be a lot worse than that. So hopefully this fixes that problem. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. Well, right. I'll just kind of go, quickly go over uh, how to take uh, the carb out real quick. Um, so to take the carb out, you gotta well, you gotta take the seat out. It makes it easier to work with. You gotta take this fuel line out right here, and then uh, there's a clamp right here which is missing. Uh, where the hell did it go? Oh, it's right here. A clamp right here you can take out with the Phillips head screwdriver. It's kind of it's kind of hard to see. There you go. The clamp right here. You just loosen that. I have angled so like I can take it out the other side. I, I can unscrew it from another side. Um, and then uh, and then you just kind of move the boot out of the way and then uh, and then connect it to the intake manifold are these studs here. And all you have to do is get a I think it's a 12 millimeter. Go get a 12 millimeter and then just use the open end and then just loosen it and then um, then it should come out. Um, you should be able to pull it pull the carb out like like the way it is right here. And then to remove the um, to remove the intake manifold, I use this. I used an extension with a long uh, with a long Allen wrench head on it um, and it worked pretty good. You can basically just stick it all the way through here and then uh, you can. You can have your way with it right there so pretty cool and it worked out pretty well so that that's the easiest way i mean yes you can just get a wrench and do it but uh but that seemed it mine were on there really tight i'd never taken it out and i was afraid i was gonna break the, the threads off but it seems okay so i'm gonna go ahead and take this glove out of here just use that to keep it clean it's actually pretty clean in there too let's take these bolts out Allen head bolts. Remember, there's a, there's a washer on it too, so not to lose that. Okay. So let's get started. So to install it, to install, I I highly highly suggest you use this stuff, anti seize compound. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and put on the bolts right here right now. And you don't have to just, you don't have to like slather it all over, maybe just like do it halfway on the tip. Because the tip is going to pass through everything anyways, you know. And that way, if you ever take it out again, you may not, hopefully you won't break the threads off. It's, a, it's aluminum, you know, you don't want it to. And it's the intake side, it doesn't get very hot. And it gets hot, but it's the intake side. in there okay so take your new intake manifold and go ahead and install it uh, not too hard um, so you got to remember that this arrow see this arrow here is pointing up because uh, this is a there's only one way to install this so um, I mean you could install it backwards that's the problem so don't don't do that because <laughs> uh, people I heard people install them backwards and then they rip really easy um, and then uh, one thing you might want to do is make sure that the um, the mating surface is pretty clean, which it looks like it's pretty clean. I'll just get a rag and wipe it. If it was the exhaust, I would probably kind of worry a little more, but it's actually not bad. And then just go ahead and put your bolts in. Maybe you can do one at a time. It's it's fairly easy. The, the beauty of the, the Warrior is that it, it's pretty easy to work on. I, it's 
pretty easy to work on. They're supposed to be super reliable, but it seems like I'm always working on this quad. So, I mean, I guess it's just that age where you know it needs attention. Right, get this other one here. I'm oh, no, sorry, my arm is like in the way. Try to do it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Pretty much can access it with uh, with your fingers. Okay. I don't know. For some reason, that that side does not want to go on. So I think what I'm going to do is switch sides first. Okay. So got it on there. And uh, all you have to do is uh, just tighten that bad boy. And I'll just do that with the extension here so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, torque it down. Um, I, I could not find a torque spec for it in the manual, uh, but the exhaust pipe is about 9 foot-pounds-ish, so I'm going to set my torque wrench for about, um, this, is a, this is a quarter inch torque wrench with a 3 eighths adapter on it. Uh, I'm going to set it to about 108 foot-pounds, maybe like 110 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, torque that so you can see what I'm doing here. This is the extension coming out right here, connect it there, torque away. Okay, that's one. And yeah, that's right, you don't want to torque this very tight. Because this is a uh, aluminum head. Okay. So that's about 110 foot pounds, is what I set it at. Ish. Let's go do it twice. Let's do a double check. Okay, good. Alright. So intake, the intake manifold is now installed, and now I just want to put the car back in. So, so put the car back in. So and the car here are um, it's held on by studs and a nut. Go ahead and take those off first. Just put them on there so they don't get lost, you know. It is kind of handy to have a uh, a magnetic pickup tool just in case you drop stuff, but it's pretty it's fairly open on the warrior. So go ahead and fish that bad boy back in. Uh, one thing you might want to check is the o-ring on here see that o-ring right there you want to make sure that's still good because that could that's another place it could leak air I'm trying to get rid of all these air leaks so the quad runs good okay and then just go ahead and put your uh put the um the nut and make sure back here So I'm not gonna get a video of it. I don't really have a good. Uh, let me get like a tripod. But yeah, what you want to do is, like I did on the other side, put the. Oh, I just dropped the washer. Put the
put the washer in first. This side's a little bit harder because there's the reverse thing. If it's in the way, you can you can take the the reverse gear selector out of the way if you want. Okay, and then you just kind of want to lock that nut on there. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but. Pretty straightforward. What's got to happen? You know, push the car back if you need more. Got it on there, and the rest is cake. So, so what you want to do is, um, you want to pull the carb out, pull the carb out a little bit, and then stick the nut in there, and then just continually press it in, and then start tightening it. I'm just gonna go tighten. I'm gonna go tighten the nuts. On each side by hand. Rotate between both sides. It's kind of hard doing this through the camera. Okay, just make sure it's nice and snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just until it kind of bottoms out and then just give it a nice little snug because uh, you can't torque it anyways. Okay, that looks good. All right. So you saw like I was kind of doing it one side at a time, rotating it so I can get it to the next part. And then the next thing to do is to put the, the, the boot back on so I kind of have it stuck on this some kind of bracket here. Okay, it was, uh, it was easier doing it from this side because it seems like it's a little more open. Um, so it's not the hardest car boot to install, I'll tell you that. There's much harder out there, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, it, it's a little challenging. So I'll try to spread the bottom part out in and then just shove it in there. It's not too difficult though. And then you just go get your, I use a long uh, Phillips head like this. And I tighten it, but uh, I probably won't be able to do it with one hand. Let me see. Yeah, we can do it with one hand. Let's see. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit. I'm just trying to just get it started here. Yeah, just get it in a position where you, you can access it with the screwdriver. But uh, I got to do this with two hands. So. Okay, I got it in there tight enough where I can just uh, do it with one hand. Still being a little stubborn though. Let's try to get it as snug as you can. I'll try to strip the screw. I feel like it should be back a little bit, but you get the picture just tight. Okay, I got it tightened. So next order of business is uh, you can put this back in if you want to you don't have to I'll just for now this is the um, drain for the bowl let's put it down a little bit go ahead and put your fuel line back in Oops. hopefully it's not water I didn't cover that 
just go stick that back in there and uh, that should be it yeah yeah that's it so this is not too hard should take uh, should take maybe like half an hour um, maybe like an hour if you're if you're taking it out and putting it back in so uh, now is the moment of truth will it run Turn it on. Give it fuel. Now I did do some stuff to the car. I replaced some gaskets and stuff. So hopefully it's not leaking anymore. It was leaking before. And I'm going to try to fire it up. Okay, yeah, I don't know why I didn't want to start earlier, but now it's starting. So. Right now, you'll choke it a little bit. Okay, choke went off. Still popping. Oh, it's still doing it. Great. Okay, well, it's still gonna have that that pickup problem, but it's a little better now. As you can see, it's idling pretty good right now. earlier so maybe it, maybe it's a cold start thing but I'm pretty sure that I'm not leaking any more air from 